Hi everyone, welcome to the comparison video of Sony ZV-E1 and A7 IV. If you are looking for a new camera, but you can't decide between the two, this video is for you. While the ZV-E1 is primarily a video camera, and the A7 IV is a hybrid camera designed for both photography and videography, it can still be challenging to decide which one is right for you. Perhaps you want the new features of the ZV-E1, but you also enjoy taking photos. So in this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the features of each camera to help you determine which one is the better investment for your needs. Before we delve into the technical specs, let me show you some video samples and see if you can tell which camera was used to shoot which footage. These were shot in S Cinetone. From these footages, there is no noticeable difference to me. Even when you zoom in 200%, I still can't tell which has better quality. Some people said A74 should have sharper 4K videos because it is actually downsampled from 7K, but at least I can see the difference from these clips. Both cameras are capable of shooting 4K 60p, but with A7 IV, there is an 1.5 times crop. But also remember, A7 IV has 33 megapixel sensor, so even with the 1.5 times crop, it's still larger than the 12 megapixel ZV-E1. I still don't see any quality difference between the two cameras. Here is a comparison of some different format from both cameras. I also included the dynamic active steady shot footage. You can see there is no noticeable quality loss. Comparing the low light capacity of these two cameras is very tricky. When shooting in S-Log3, the ZV-E1 has the base ISO at 640 and 12800 while the A7 IV has the base ISO at 800 and 3200. The base ISO means your video will have the least noise at these numbers. So for example, shooting at ISO 12800 will look much cleaner than at ISO 10000 on ZV-E1. Now the problem I have encountered is that in most cases, ISO 12800 is too bright for me. I usually take videos on night street where there are store signs, street lamps, car lights, etc. So with ZV-E1, I need to put an ND filter on at night, which I think is quite unintuitive. On the other hand, a 74 space ISO at 800 and 3200 is more reasonable to me. So I guess my conclusion for the low light comparison is that ZV-E1 performs better in extreme low light and A7 IV is better in normal low light. As you can see, A7 IV is much cleaner than ZV-E1 at ISO 6400, but the ZV-E1 is cleaner at 12800 than A7 IV. So it really depends on what kind of low light environment you are in. For me, the biggest difference is that I think A7 IV is more user-friendly because in most situations, you don't need an ND filter. 
It is without a doubt that the ZBE1 wins over A74 when it comes to stabilization. When you are holding the camera while walking, with the new dynamic active steady shot feature of ZBE1, you no longer need a gimbal or a catalyst brows. And you can still get an almost gimbal-like smooth footage. Apart from dynamic active steady shot, the new framing stabilizer feature also does a great job. It not only stabilizes the footage, but meanwhile it keeps your subject at a pointed area. But with A74, I guess the best you can do is turn on the IBIS and then stabilize the footage in Catalyst Browse, which can be quite troublesome because you can only process one footage at a time and the processing time is quite long. On the other hand, if you are simply doing a still shot or panning the camera, I think the IBIS or Active Steady Shot can already do a great job. There is no need to use Dynamic Active Steady Shot in these cases, unless a more narrow view happens to be what you are looking for. The ZV-E1 also has better rolling shutter than the A7 IV, so if you have the need to shoot fast-moving objects like animals or sports, this can be a huge plus. A lot of people have been complaining about the overheating issue of ZV-E1. While it is true that the ZV-E1 is more likely to overheat than the A7 IV, it only happens when you record continuously. I have tested shooting 4K 60p at 29 degrees Celsius under direct sunlight, and at about 17 minutes, this high temperature icon appeared, and then it did overheat at 18 minutes and 30 seconds. I also tried shooting some casual short clips, and it didn't overheat for more than two hours. What if you put an APS-C lens on these two cameras? Well, both A7 IV and ZV-E1 can support APS-C lenses. With A7 IV, you have the option of APS-C Super 35 shooting. The footage will be cropped 1.5 times, but the final video will still be 4K. And with ZV-E1, it's more complicated. There is no APS-C Super 35 shooting in 4K, so you will see the black edges. But you can use Dynamic Active Steady Shot or Clear Image Zoom to cut them off. Another method is that you can choose 1080p, and the APS-C Super 35 shooting will no longer be grayed out. I have made a separated video about this, so check it out for more details if you're interested. Before I bought the ZV-E1, I was very skeptical about the photo quality, but it turned out to be surprisingly good. Now I will share with you several sets of photos and see if you can tell which is taken with which camera. Did you guess it correctly? I'm now looking at these photos on my 16-inch MacBook, and seriously, I can't tell the difference. If you look at it at normal size or even smaller on your Instagram, honestly, no one can tell the difference. But the A7 IV has 33 megapixels after all, so if you zoom in, you can see clearly that A7 IV has higher resolution than ZV-E1. This also means that you have more room to crop the image if you want. This can be helpful if you want a better composition while editing, or of course if you want to print out your photo at a large scale. 
nevertheless, I still need to complain about the photography function of the ZV-E1. Despite the surprisingly good quality from a 12 megapixel camera, I had a terrible user experience because the photo and video menu are linked together. In most cases, I use S-Log3 for video and HLG203 for photo, which means I need very different ISO numbers for videos and for photos. And in turn, I will have to change the shutter speed and the aperture. So when I shift from photo menu to video menu or from video to photo, I will have to change everything. On the other hand, the a7 IV being a hybrid camera, it rightfully has separated menus for video and photo. But of course, this is a problem only if you have the need to constantly change between video and photo mode. If you mainly take videos and need the photo function once in a while, this shouldn't bother you. Another thing is that the VE10 doesn't have an EVF. This never bothers me, but many people do find the lack of EVF a deal breaker for photography. Now let's talk about some features that ZV-E1 has and A7 IV doesn't. One feature that is unique to the ZV-E1 is AI framing, which can keep the subject in the frame even if they move around. This is particularly useful for solo content creators who need to move around while filming. My experience of using this function is that I don't think it is very reliable. Sometimes the checking isn't accurate, but it still can be a great tool if you already have an A camera and you can just leave it there as a B camera. Another notable feature is the Cine Vlog mode. This is specifically designed for content creators who don't want to spend time color grading. You have several looks to choose from, and under each look, there are different moods. And there is also baked in black bars. Personally, I like those different styles, but I would like this feature better if we have the option to get rid of those black bars. But unfortunately, that's just how it is currently. The ZV-E1 also has the ability to import LUTs. This is a feature that is not available on the A7 IV. Next, ZV-E1 has more recognition targets to choose from. Humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, and airplanes. While with A7 IV, you only have humans, animals, and birds. But in terms of autofocus capacity, I think both cameras are amazing. I can't really tell which one has better performance. Finally, let's not forget that ZV-E1 weighs only 483 grams, while the A7 IV weighs 659 grams. So it is definitely a plus if you want to travel lightweight. A7 IV has two card slots, so if what you're filming is something that you can't afford to lose, this can make sure you have more backup. Another feature that the A7 IV has and the ZV-E1 does not is the full-size HDMI port, which allows you to connect the camera to an external monitor. But honestly, for vloggers and content creators, the dual card slot and full-size HDMI port may not be necessary features. These features are more geared towards professional photographers and videographers who require the highest level of performance and flexibility from their equipment. After so many explanations, if you are still hesitating which camera to buy, let me give you a quick guideline. Buy the A7 IV if you are filming paid work for clients. Number two, if you think photos are more important or equally important to you as videos. Number three, if you need to record continuously. And buy the ZV-E1 if your content include a lot of movement, or if you are a solo content creator who need to film yourself, or if you shoot in extreme low light environment. Personally, I think the ZV-E1 may be better suited for casual content creators. It's a high-quality point-and-shot camera with lots of features, 
and the A74 is the clear choice for professionals who require the most advanced features and capabilities. I hope you find this video helpful. Let me know in the comment area which camera is more suitable for you. I will see you next time.